Yeah, as it is. Okay, so as we begin on the part two of today, as we look into how the out, uh, how the water rabbit goes in, uh, and uh, for here as we explore the itinerary today is part two where we look into the country's outlook for Malaysia. So we would like to start off with multi generational global outlook, then to your country outlook, market outlook before we go on into the personal outlook uh, in terms of wealth, relationship and health. And so from the feng shui perspective or the metaphysics perspective of multi-generational and global outlook, the book uh, that we normally go for, there are few, like this particular book, uh, I'll just pronounce it in the English format, uh, Huang Ji Jing Shi, which of course goes into a very, very long count, uh, very, very long count. Therefore, this will be the, the calendar for what may be deemed to be very close to the galactic year. And so in this particular galactic year, the period between 1984 to the year 2343, to which we are at the beginning, is this particular hexagram. Huh? This particular hexagram. So this hexagram is going to be the hexagram for this long generation. Huh? It's a long generation. And the hexagram is one that is called the cauldron. Now, if you could recall what is the cauldron, huh? what is the cauldron, especially from the Chinese, from the Chinese uh, so-called image. What is the image that you have when we talk about a cauldron? Huh? We talk about a cauldron. So normally, uh, how many legs would a cauldron have? How many legs? Uh, that would be something that can be perhaps useful to begin with. Huh? Therefore, the imagery for the generation is to look into the quadrant. Now, for those who do not know, a quadrant, of course, have uh, three legs. Huh? Three legs. So, one of the imagery for the quadrant actually would mean that unity. Huh? Unity comes from three parties. Huh? So, there are three parties. And, of course, if one leg breaks, huh, then the quadrant would fall, as opposed to uh, how we consider a table or chair with four legs. Huh? So, in a way, a uh, quadrant, uh, a thing represents a bit of a vessel uh, into looking into this. Okay, so that will say well, sometimes you look into the team from the uh, bigger picture from here. Uh, then, of course, we look into the long count from all the averages. These are some of the uh, slides that I've talked about. Uh, so I'm going to go through very quickly. And from Professor David Coe's sharing, the other book is called The Pushback Divination. So the Tui Pei Shu, the Pushback Divination refers to also multi-generational and in terms of multi-generational the book uh, publishes the hexagram the meaning from one uh, hexagram to the other hexagram as you look into the 24-year cycle so the cycle that we have right now is from the 1984 all the way to 2043 and of course next year will be the final year as you come into period number eight huh? as we move into period eight uh, when we finish period 8, moving into period 9. So, to cut a long story short, of course, uh, each of these qua number refers to a particular element. And so, the qua number that we have uh, here will be the one that denotes uh, a very brief, short meaning to what each of these represents. So, in very short, 168 would be positive. And period 9, in the old, uh, in the old, uh, not the new, or the early heaven basically would be metal element. Four and nine would be metal element, and that may mean war, violence, and so on. So this would be the the expectation for what the qua number would indicate. Huh, moving into period number nine, right? Huh? So we can do expect huh? there will be a tremendous amount of upset. And so based on Professor David Kwa, so now move on into the qua dynamics that we have. We will explore the qua for each particular sector. And as we zoom in on into the sector that we have in Malaysia, which is in the southeast quadrant. So the southeast quadrant represents the qua number three together with the following uh, period that we have. And so as you come on into from the bigger picture, as we look into period number nine, which is the metal period, a warring period, uh, a warring period. And so by doing that, we do expect the sectors to have changed. 
but but somehow this period tends to be favorable to southeast. Huh? So Malaysia is part of the southeast region, which will find ourselves favorable. Huh? So favorable as it is. Okay, so as we now move on into Southeast Asia, uh, this would be considered to be the sex hexagram for the region. Of course, this region will include Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, which are all southwest from the tallest point, which is the Himalaya. So if you want to do a very quick look into the onset, we'll consider very quickly as we explore the various lunar month, 1, 6, and 7, So one six and seven represents sorry not not six, six uh, one six and eight I beg your pardon yeah so one six and eight represents favorable months uh, favorable months months of wealth prosperity benefits so by virtue of this we would expect the month of March to be favorable to Malaysia as well so likewise in August October and also December so these are the months to which we may find favor in investments so what is unfavorable uh, in terms of sickness and disease would then be month number five and month number two right? or the qua number two here that we have therefore so the months that we can see will be april july and january yeah as it is so therefore that's the, a big a quick outlook into the southeast asia huh? into and now that from Southeast Asia, we now zoom in. Huh? We now zoom in to. Huh? We now zoom in to the country. So as we zoom in to the country each year. Now, when I presented for the CPA Australia, let me just share some of the earlier slides. Huh? So this was presented by me in the year 2022. And 2022, as we look into the hexagram, huh? the hexagram for 2022. So this is where, as we look into, uh, still, still the current year, lah, still the current year, still in the current year, the qua number for Malaysia, the qua number for Malaysia is this particular hexagram. And this hexagram, this hexagram, uh, if we look into the nature of a hexagram, this is from the current year Malaysia. And of course, for those who wish to again be reminded on the qua, uh, this is a bit of a refresher for those who wish to be reminded for the qua. This particular qua is reading as you go. Is then number one, the lower trigram, the inner trigram, is the li qua. Uh, which is fire. Uh, therefore, the lower trigram is the uh, fire. Not, not this squad, this is wrong. Uh, so, therefore, the fire qua uh, is the li qua. Nine. Uh, therefore, it will be marked by the yin number in the in the middle, uh, in the, at the end. Therefore, this is li qua. I think that's just a little bit wrong. Uh, so All right. So we have the Li Kua. Li Kua is fire. And therefore for Malaysia, the lower trigram for 2022 is fire and the lower trigram, which represents the earth. And the upper trigram. Right? The upper trigram would represent the one solid yang line in the middle, which is the second sun. The second sun is huh? therefore is a Gan Kua. Gan Kua, of course, uh, Gan Kua, of course, is water, uh, water. And so in the first period, uh, this particular uh, hexagram represents a accomplishment. Uh, it represents accomplishment. But somehow, uh, it, if you look into it from this perspective, water, water moves downwards. Uh, water flows down and fire goes up. Therefore, by virtue of this, this symbolizes. Huh? So this, this so the reading huh? represents that the fire uh, goes up and the water comes down. And so in a way, uh, in a way, uh, this 
outlook may open up to danger. Open up to danger. And so in my particular reading for last year's presentation, the expected, uh, the expected uh, February to April to begin with, that fire may be extinguished. Uh, because imagine uh, if you have fire below and water above, then the picture may be one that says that it is raining on fire. Uh, that means you have a fire and it is raining on fire. And so if it rains on fire, of course, it would then denote that the fire will be put off. Uh, the fire will be put off. And so this represents, uh, represents a danger to the text. So therefore, this is the outlook which is negative for the fire element. The hexagram also, that means the hexagram calls for a very bad share market. Huh? It's a very, very bad share market. And this market, of course, opens to only a very small progress. So the message today or this year, whatever that is, huh, the key investment objective this year is don't double down. Huh? Don't double down. And so if any losses are incurred, don't chase after it. Huh? Uh, sell, cut your losses. Because what come down will be very likely to be uh, not recovered. And from this particular hexagram, of course, as we move, the hexagram also calls for what that, that, that's where I drew the message from. That this indicates that what is at the bottom, what is at the bottom, what is at the bottom will go up. So whoever loses will win. Whoever loses will win. So the party, uh, the party or the party or the person that loses, uh, loses a lot uh, or lose, will tend to go up. Uh, will tend to go up. And water, of course, represents the upper triangle, which is the top. Will come down. Uh, will come. So this year is a year of reversal, a year where anything that is at the top. So if we look into the market like made Facebook, we find that the share prices have dropped. We find like a Bitcoin uh, investment, uh, what is at the top has now bottomed out. Or what is at the bottom will tend to increase. Uh, therefore, that will be the uh, reading for the particular outlook for Malaysia in this particular year, huh? in this year as we speak. Now the year before that, the year before that on the year of the ox, uh, what was the sharing at that time? So the sharing at that time of course is this particular hexagram. So in this particular hexagram, which of course will be the year 2021, we will consider that we have the case where fire is at the bottom, and this is Kankwa, which is Earth, which is Earth at the top. Therefore, we have Earth at the top, fire at the bottom, represents a cover, no? represents that the Earth is covering the fire, represents it's very difficult to actually uh, succeed no? or, it, or to struggle. So therefore, indicating that, no? that the outlook is still uh, recovery, but still not very good no? until the later end, as it is. And of course, one thing to note is that in May, July, we talk about legal issues and the dissolution of an important entity. And of course, at that time, then uh, some of my uh, participants said it was the Evergrande. Huh? The Evergrande. So this indicates that when we look into the hexagram, when we analyze for the market, we will like to look into the prevailing energy that this particular year. And so now, let us come to the hexagram for next year, or for the coming, the year 2023. The coming 2023, the hexagram is number 37, which is family members. Therefore, here in this particular hexagram, we are going to look into it year by, we're going to look at it from an annual outlook. Therefore, we're going to break it later into. We're going to look at it in an annual outlook. Huh? Then later, of course, we're going to break it into the uh, periodical outlook. Okay, now, first, first and foremost, here the hexagram reveals that it is fire at the bottom. Liqua, fire at the bottom. 
and then it is kankwa which is of uh, of uh, no it is sorry uh, no this is a uh, wood uh, which is your chenkwa uh, sorry your shinkwa sorry yeah uh, it is your shinkwa on your eldest daughter which is wood by nature now this wood also means wheat uh, this wood also means wheat the eldest daughter so in the first picture for this together with the commentaries that are being made the first part indicates uh, the first part indicates that this this particular hexagram has all uh, except the last one all of the uh, lines in the proper order in the proper order because normally in chinese metaphysics odd number odd number one three five odd number represents yang and so the yang lines are expected and so true enough the odd number it is all yang lines when we look into the even number two four six we expect to find yin lines and we find that this is true enough yin lines except the last one and so because of this uh, it is what we call coming back home huh? coming back home therefore in every part huh? it represents that huh? it represents that this hexagram is generally positive huh? positive but I would like you to also uh, come to broad imagination. What is the image that you expect if you find fire in the lower trigram? Uh, yes, Connie. Yeah? 2023 is generally very positive for investment. For investment. Okay. How's the image like? Huh? How is the image like? Because last year, or not last year, like this year, like this year, the year of the tiger, it is pretty bad. Huh? It's pretty bad. And true enough, huh? pretty bad for technology stocks and overall. Huh? Okay, so now this is where we're going to look into for next year. So what is the image? The image is that what, what do you, what would you expect if you find fire in the lower trigram and wind on the earth? Upper trigram. What is the image of wind uh, blowing all over the uh, blowing over the fire? Especially as we know that wood produces fire. Wood produces fire. So therefore, heaven, heaven, uh, the upper trigram represents heaven, produces earth. And so generally this will be quite a very positive hexagram and this imagery to me would be when the wind direction blows over the fire fire will spread fire uh, spread all across and so this represents a year of speculation that is wide spreading and so this year the uh, saying maybe more on momentum trading, uh, more on momentum trading. And the wind will blow strong and fast. Therefore, it will be persistent. Persistent. So, meaning to say that last year, last year, the investment advice is don't double down. Uh, don't double down. Usually, it is a gambler's objective huh? when gamblers loses money gamblers tends to double down when investors lose money they tend to double down to in order to recover their losses but the message for 2022 tiger year don't huh? this one is don't don't double down here for next year chase uh, therefore still got time to chase huh? that would be some of the message don't worry still got time to chase why because the fire spread and it spreads wide and fast and that will be how the market would behave so, uh, so this indicates the hexagram picture 
that when you have your uh, fire below and wind above, creating a kind of a high pressure dome with a fire flowing, producing the qi. So therefore, we're going to have quite a very good qi itself, as it is. And generally positive, that's what I mentioned. Yeah, Connie. But now, let's look into the however. Look into the but then. Huh? But then. Now, we consider that from 1984 to 2034, during this long multi generational outlook, which is the cauldron, the thing hexagram somehow is in exact opposite no? exact opposite trigram to the Malaysia next year trigram the Malaysia next year trigram no? whereby every yang lines is the yin lines for the generation and every yin line is then yang no? as it is now of course in Chinese metaphysics, what do we call this? What do we call the energy huh? uh, that is exactly opposing and exactly that uh, comes to each other? And therefore, this may mean fan yin, huh? opposite energy. And of course, when energy oppose each other in this part, it neutralizes each area. Huh? Where the yang for the yin, the yin for the yang. Huh? may create a scenario where there's a very neutralizing uh, global master hexagram. And so Malaysia uh, hexagram is inverse no, to the global master hexagram for the following year. So this may indicate no, that our experience for next year will be very different, opposite, no, contrary to the rest of the world. Yeah? Into one. Okay, so generally, as we bring on to the next part, we come into the commentaries that are made for each and particular uh, hexagram that we have. So overall, as we look into the reading, the reading begins with the following. Now, this hexagram is a particular reading that we have, and each reading, you take your own clue. Huh? You take your own clue. Because... One thing that is very mystic or mysterious about the hexagram is the interpretation. Now, generally, more often than not, the limitation on each reader. I call myself a reader. I don't call myself a master, of course. You all should know me better than that. Uh, there, of course, there are also many masters outside there. Uh, now, of course, the one limitation about function masters, all of them, is the interpretation. The hexagram is there. The reading is there. But the skill in interpreting it, the skill in bringing relevance to it. And so the last time when we share this, and uh, we talk about politics. Huh? So, so, so when we talk about politics, there is always, uh, where, where, where that's where the hexagram is being used. Huh? The hexagram was used to read about the political development especially when this is the country hexagram. And so how about the hexagram actually means? So the, my interpretation from this hexagram to answer to the question of the general election is that the winner shall lose. Huh? The winner shall lose and the loser shall win because the hexagram calls to say that those at the top will come flow down and those at the bottom will flow up. Uh, so therefore, that is the hexagram reading into it. Huh? How we, how that reading applies huh, to the forecast, to the energy for the year, and to the outlook that we have. And so now, that is for this year. But now as you come on into the following year, this becomes the reading that. Huh? The reading will then be fire below, wind and wood above. And fire Produces and burn, uh, and it burnt the wood. Uh, it burns the wood into the area. And so, fire and wood normally means fast. Uh, fast. The speed is there. Uh, therefore, things move fast. Things move uh, with a very furious fire energy. 
Okay, but now let's take a look into the comment three that we have six lines here. So normally each line can be further broken into what we know as two months. Huh? Two months. Therefore, lunar calendar month one and two is here, three and four is here, and so on huh? until eleven and twelve. Therefore, we follow each of the lunar months as we go along. And so each one of them brings about a certain particular requirements and certain actions that we do. But along the line, we can also see how it flows. So in the first trigram below, January to February. Huh? So January to February, this is, these are the words. Huh? These are the words. With barriers, there is a hope. Regrets vanish. Or for those who can read uh, Chinese, th those are the area that you have. Huh? Therefore, as we explore, and again, huh, it is up to you to now in to interpret. It is not to you to translate what it actually means to you. And so when you ask a question, when you want to look for your forecast of the year, these are the meaning for January and February. It indicates that with barriers, there is a hope. So in, in the context of investments, huh, with barriers, of course, means introducing parameter, introducing control, having some discipline, having a very clear separation between what is outside and what is inside. Huh? And therefore, we build our walls. So usually, uh, for the case of investment, this would indicate that you become more focused onto your investment needs. You begin to be more investor-centric uh, rather than market-centric. But generally, uh, this calls for the action for you to be very clear about your investment needs. Uh, therefore, it's more inward-looking. Now, what do we mean by inward looking in the world of finance? Well, most of the time, many investors are more outward looking. They would, they, they would tend to ask questions like, can I buy Bitcoin? Can I buy property? Is it a good time to buy this share? Is it a good time to buy that? Now, that, that normally is what we call market centric. We normally call that market centric. Huh? But, the hexagram for January, February calls for investor-centric. Uh, calls for investor-centric. Therefore, the question that you should ask is not whether or not you should buy Bitcoin, but rather, why should you buy Bitcoin? What is the purpose of you investing? Because many times, investors do not remain guarded. Huh? They do not remain guarded in a sense. But anyway, the reading is primarily on fire. So the stocks that we should start to look for will be fire-related stocks, which is technology, uh, technology as it is. But now let's move on to the second part, which is then March to April. Okay, so the question is, uh, do the months affect the time to invest? Oh, yes, yes. The months affect the time to invest. And the months related to the hexagram? Yes, it does as well. It does. Therefore, that's where you need to combine, you need to combine this together with the graph that I have earlier. Okay? Yeah. So now let's see. First lunar month, what, see, it ties up together, you know. What is February? Uh? February is fire. February is fire. And therefore, with hexagram, it also means fire. Now, if you look into the technology stocks over the US market, especially, it has been brutal. Uh? The share market has been horrible. The, uh, the, the market have lost a lot uh, in terms of those that pursue uh, tech stocks. Therefore, let's say, for example, if you look into... Uh, technology stocks like innovation. Take a look into uh, stocks like up innovation. This year has been brutal. 2022, la. 2022 has been brutal la, since that period. 
Okay, so uh, this uh, this ETF, uh, this ETF uh, innovation is one of used to be the darling, uh, used to be the darling of many investors because the stocks like uh, uh, Amazon, the Fangs, uh, the Facebook has tremendously gone up. So many investors, many investors uh, find favor with this uh, investment as it moves from, if you look into this trajectory due to the Tesla, Amazon, Fangs, uh, they call it. Uh, Thanks. Google, Spotify, Amazon, Facebook, and it has tremendously gone up. So we're looking to price it at $50 to $150. Huh? So we're talking about 300% return. And then, of course, over the last uh, two years, it has gone down. Over to, so it's been horribly, terribly, huh? down to very, very low. And so the question, of course, now is, whether or not, uh, whether or not there should be a recovery. Uh? Therefore, that, that is the question. That is the question. Uh, whether the stocks will create technology or not. Okay, so so in a way, if if we get it, then it looks like this is a technology stock. Uh, this is a technology stock. And if you look into the hexagram for Asia, uh, you look into the hexagram for Asia. Uh, coming to it, uh, then uh, 7 and 6. 7 6 looks at February and March would be good for us to consider. And then the hexagram here will be for fire. January and February. Okay, now as we move on to March and April. Now, when you move on to March and April, the one of the strategies is you look at this hexagram, you look at this hexagram. And now you move up by one rank. By moving to this rank, you come to this picture here. This picture is a picture of what? This picture is a picture of the second Yang line. That means the second sun, which is the Kankwa, which is water. Oh, very bad. And so fire move to water. Now you know uh, fire and water are opposing to each other. And therefore, when you start to move, suddenly you encounter danger. And the danger will come in. Uh. So if you look into the Asian uh, hexagram, the danger will be starting from number 5, which is sickness. Uh. Sickness death to number 4 which is then the metal star. Therefore, then we can see that April and May are not going to be very good months. April and uh, March and April, so yeah, March and April, not going to be good months. So this is where it calls for no direction to pursue. No direction to pursue. Okay, make no arbitrary decision. Make no irresolute action. Feed the household. Take care of your own needs. Huh? Take care of your own needs. Be more defensive. Protect. Do nothing more than what is necessary. Uh, therefore, this would mean to time to consolidate to make sure that we have no active movement. Huh? So we do consider that the month of March and April are going to be very volatile. There will be bad news. Uh, so therefore, we will try to stay low. Huh? So that's where the reading Turns, huh? Okay, so in a way, in a way, we can see that things are moving now. That means starting from December, January onwards, I think the market is recovering. It's going to be quite a hot, good recovery until, of course, it comes to April and May. Huh? April and May. And when it comes to the point, then, of course, put a stop. Okay, are we alright so far? Generally, to cut long story short, in this reading, water normally is bad. Fire normally is good huh? in terms of huh? Now, as you move on to one rung, what do we have now? And now, this is a picture of the fire again. Huh? So, it comes into fire again. So, as you come to fire again, huh, as you move up to the rung, huh, slowly as we 
move up to that particular rung uh, on the fire again. Then I uh, will see the reading comes into May and June. Uh, but still, uh, uh, from water to fire again, uh, coming to the point uh, coming to the point of where we call separation. Uh, we, we call it separation. Why is it separation? Is that we have water here just now and we got now moving to fire. So water comes down and fire goes up. Therefore, this looks more like earth and heaven are separated. You know? so, so the reading goes into a separation. And so it goes into separation. Then this is where the influx energy you know, uh, intensifies, puts the relationship to task. Therefore, I consider it to be... Uh, I consider somehow the volatility indicating that that there are regrets, danger, and good fortune. But if you read it, read, read at it here, again, uh, it's up to your interpretation. It's up to how you look at the interpretation and make a meaning out of it. Uh, here it says here, uh, people in the home, school and school. <laughs> people in the home, school and school. Regrets, danger, good fortune. Wife and child giggle and giggle in the end shit. Of course, as we read this along uh, and try to uh, remember the value systems that the ancient Chinese uh, during the Tang Dynasty, Ming Dynasty holds, and increasingly during the Confucius part, maybe at this uh, to understand, of course, uh, wife and children, you know, like what they said, uh, children should be seen and not heard, and therefore the conduct of the wife and the children if they do not put up a serious or a proper uh, in front of the people it brings to the shame okay uh, but 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 to interpret that uh, indicating mostly control and self-discipline and this giggle and giggle may mean emotion emotional trick normally water tends to bring emotion to the trick yeah? so therefore this is where uh, we can consider uh, that uh, May and June will then be quite in the middle, quite volatile huh, to the part as well. Okay, now let's move on to the next part where we come into July and August. But when we reconcile, let's reconcile to the hexagram to the part on July and August. Huh? So comes to the month of August, that's where again we have your 1 and 9. Uh, or one, uh, one, and then eight here again, uh, coming up to the good times. And so now we begin to see that by avoiding uh, these particular months, moving towards August and September, uh, July, August, uh, to begin with, then we'll find that it will be good fortune. It's good in terms to invest, and the returns uh, will then be good. So if we look into the hexagram, of course, into this part, I think we're coming to the last final part where as you move on to the top, it will then be your your eldest daughter, Shin Kwa, which is then Wit. And so that's where we come into fire and win again huh, as we move up earlier. And so this will be the spreading and the market rally. And therefore, we would expect the market to rally uh, very strongly in July, August. So July, August would be the great time to enrich fortune and the market is expected to experience a very sharp uh, bloom ahead. Okay, so that's the reading for the July, August huh, that comes in. Okay, as we come into the next part, then we come to September, October. September, October will be also favorable. And it says here, the king enters his own home. Do not worry. Now, why, do we, why is there to worry? Huh? 
you know, I mean, back in those royal palaces, huh? the, the king very seldom enters his own home where the family members are. Therefore, here the king pays a visit to his own home. So the king paying a visit to his own home uh, may indicate uh, that somebody that is powerful, somebody that is superior is visiting you. And as they come upon your presence, there is a fear of a fear of uh, competence, uh, a fear that you may not be able to satisfy or to meet the expectations of a more powerful person. Uh or a powerful authority. But in this case, this indicates that by proper conduct, then one would have better good fortune. So that's the reading for September and October. There we have. Right, so come on into the tail end where we have November and December. This would also indicate that the readings are positive yet again. That uh, that uh, we say with truth and confidence, like authority, uh, in the end, good fortune. So normally, this image uh, would indicate that if there is words have substance and actions are consistent, indicating that there is a good, uh, a so called coordination between the market and the uh, and and the people. And the investors in this part would also represent reasonably well a good fortune itself. So at the end of the day, the hexagram uh, would indicate quite a uh, positive read, uh, uh, energy for this particular line. Okay, so there we go. This will be looking uh, into the hexagram for Malaysia, the hexagram for Malaysia, and how one can use the hexagram and to look into the changing lines in order to form an expectation and prediction about what is likely to come. So in my imagery for this particular year, I would consider that the imagery year would be actually more towards a fire spreading out wide. Uh, so this indicates strong market rally. One first rally may happen in January, February itself. But do bear in mind that the rally that happens in January, February would not last very long. Huh? Would not last very long. And so what in any case that the February March rally would be strong and good. Huh? But it will not last very long. Then comes April, May, where we see it to decline. And then of course we'll see it from July onwards. From August onwards huh, to September here, you then see yet another strong rally at the end huh, in the one point. Uh, would not last long. Well, in, in a way, huh, in a way, uh, usually when we analyze market trends or market movements, right? Uh, let's see, where, where did I put my stuff? Hey, sorry. Uh, oh yeah. Now, uh, normally, as you would no, normally, uh, normally, I'm sure in investment, right? If you consider the rally, you will, you always have the first wave, uh, the first wave, uh, the first wave, and then followed by a correction, uh, and then followed by the second wave. Okay or not? Uh. Uh, this I mean, this is the Iliad wave theory, la, the wave 1, wave 2, wave 3. Therefore, for, for us, the, for next year, wave 1 will be January, February, uh, tail end to March. So March will then decline from March, April, May, then coming to July again, to a very strong rally till the end of the year. And so the question is whether, up to you, la, whether you want to sell, take profit, and then buy back again, or you prefer to do nothing. So if you prefer to do nothing, uh, if you prefer to do nothing, then maybe the whole year will still be positive for you. 
the whole year. But but just imagine this. Eh? Just imagine this. Had you bought, uh, let's say for example, had you bought this at the beginning of October, you will feel bad about yourself. You will feel bad about yourself because whatever investments that you make have now resulted in a loss. Right now? It resulted in a loss. Uh, therefore, if you know the proper timing, I mean, of course, this is just hypothetical. If you know the proper timing, then of course, you will sell here and you buy back again. Uh, therefore, that's where you can also catch the wave huh, that comes into the point. Uh, therefore, from the hexagram, uh, from the hexagram reading together with also your hexagram global hexagram it also says about the same thing huh? so february march uh, will be here the first leg lah, the first leg lah. so the first wave february march and then of course coming down to april may uh, doing a bit up huh? but then i think the biggest rally will then be from august huh? august and you can play all the way up to the end of the year huh? all the way up to the end of the year Okay. All right. Huh? So now this will be just looking into the uh, particular, the particular outlook that we may have. And of course, next thing is to go into the various sector to see what are the sectors that can then uh, be favorable to the investor. So these are the, the sectors, of course, represents here, looking into the primarily qua numbers that we actually would have, huh? that we have here as well. Okay, well, so this represents or this wrap up into the market outlook using the hexagram approach. And I believe huh, that for those of you who have received Professor Joel's materials, her materials also uh, uses the same because this, this is from Minx. Huh? This hexagram outlook is one that is from Minx. And it's quite distinguishable because we do see that many feng shui masters out there uh, use other methods to forecast for the year they normally use the rabbit element and and likewise as it is yeah but ours uh, this sharing is on sector look in for the investment look we use the hexagram and how this can come in all right okay so this will be the sharing for today sharing for the part two looking into how the hexagram uh, uh, projects to the market outlook expectedly for the following year so anyway, so far, I think for my CPU Australia, it's quite good. I mean, the, we we tend to rely on, I mean, there was a demand uh, more for this. Uh, that's what the participants there are looking for. They want me to just interpret the outlook, the hexagram outlook for the particular year. Yeah, as it is. Okay, all right. Thank you, Kimte. That will be for the end of the sharing for today. Anyone else have anything, anything to ask? This will be the right time. Okay. Thank you. If not, then we'll call it a night. Huh? Thank you, everyone.